Hi everyone and welcome back. Um, <laughs> a couple of logistical notes. Um, first, if you have not yet done it, get your dough out, get it on the counter, let it start warming up. We're going to get our hands in it and start eating. Uh, the second thing is, it seems like um, Zoom might be having a little bit of a challenge because a lot of you are logging in and it's assigning your name Mike Fry, but you can go into the options and change your name so um, we can talk to you by name. It's just a lot easier, so it helps us out. Um, lastly, um, at the end of this session, we're going to have hopefully a delicious pasta meal and you've see, read the instructions and you got the ingredients ready for whatever dish you're going to make. Um, we are going to make um, a tomato based kind of uh, spaghetti. Um, we've got our um, home canned tomato sauce here that we have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We started out with, I think, probably 60 or 70 of these, I think. Yeah, we do about, a, we can about 120 pounds of tomatoes every fall. So this, this is tomato sauce that we canned last fall using tomatoes, homegrown basil, rosemary, garlic yep. from our CSA and our outdoor garden. Yep, um, we usually so add pepper, you know, bell pepper, <laughs> and... Whoops, <there's> the <laughs> Um, we usually add bell pepper and onion to that and just cook a big pot. And so really that's the basis of any really good sauce. Um, and we've been doing it for years and we live on it all throughout the winter time. We still have quite a bit of it left from last fall, but it is 120 pounds of tomato. So anyway, that's what we're doing. It's to, a long weekend project. <laughs> to that we have added and sauteed up just a little bit of organic, um, Italian sausage um, and that's what's in this pat, pot over here uh, so when we make our noodles we're just going to put that sauce on the noodles and then sprinkle it with a little bit of Parmesan cheese I'm not sure um, have, do all of you have your ingredient meal ingredients all planned out what you're going to make very good I'm seeing not heads nodding that's very good excellent 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 um, so the other thing that you're going to need, in addition to your dough that is hopefully now out of the refrigerator, you're going to need a pot, um, you can see over here, for boiling water, a large enough pot, it doesn't, it, it, you want it to boil freely, and depending on whether you're going to shells, bow tie pasta, or noodles, will depend a little bit on, you know, how much water you need, but you need a pot of water. You're going to need a generous amount of salt because we're going to put a lot of salt in this water when we boil it. And in fact, right now, why doesn't everybody go put their water on high? Because we're going to want that at a rolling boil when our pasta is done. So let's go ahead and put our water on the stove on high and we'll wait till it's back and you've got that set up. And then we'll move on. We should, we'll also want a strainer or colander in your sink. So that when your <laughs> pasta comes out of there, you're going to be able to put it in the sink and hopefully we'll be ready. So <laughs> pasta is made, we can just throw it in a bowl with the rest of our ingredients and our, and our meal will be done. Yep. Unlike uh, the store-bought pasta, the dried pasta, when you put it in the water, it's going to cook very, very quickly. Um, far quicker than any store bought pasta. One other thing that you might want to find, some kind of a pasta bowl. Um, we're using this big, nice um, bowl here. The reason for this is as we're making our pasta noodles or pasta shells or bow ties, we're going to, we're going to want a bowl to put those in that is lightly floured that allows those noodles to just kind of hang out and not stick together because they're going to want to dry just a little bit before we cook them so that they don't form a clump, they stay separate. Yeah, and so we're getting a large flat bowl so we can space them out and put some air in between the noodles as, the, as we're making more. Uh, we can just kind of set them out and and, you know, so a, a large, it doesn't have to be a bowl, it can be any large flat surface that you can flour that your made noodles on, and then we'll be good to go. And um, so 
how is everybody doing? Not, I can't see, and you know, uh, Sarah, Mirtha, and Jean don't have their video on, but maybe you could all tell me, do you have your water boiling? Is everything all set? Are you ready to go? Water's boiling? No. Right. Do we have to? Like, do I have to eat right now, or can I make it now and then have it? You can you make it now and save it for later. You can make it now and save in, it for later. In fact, that's a great segue. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what we do is with the amount of pasta that we're creating today, and I suspect that you are too, depending on, on the size of your family, how many people are gonna be eating, um, we reuse these nice um, deli dishes that come from the store, um, and we separate our pasta into you know, clumps, and we'll store one in a size container like this, in put freezer. it in the freezer, and then we pull it out when we want to make a meal. Now that's based, if we fill this with pasta, typically what that does is that feeds the two of us. So I don't know if that gives you kind of a guide of, you know, we're not huge eaters, but we're not um, petite eaters either. We're probably sort of average. So and what, so yeah, so if we take the raw, the raw dough and put it in a container like this in the freezer, that will be a meal with some leftovers for the two of us. Yep. And um, and this little bit of dough that we made is probably going to be enough for two of these about. So um, and sometimes I'll make a giant batch of dough and I'll use six eggs and I'll just freeze up a bunch. And so then all the work and effort seems to make sense because you can literally store up in the freezer a bunch of pasta dough that's ready to go. You just thaw it out, knead it, and make your shells. And literally, the cooking takes no time at all, as George was saying. It's really fast. Yeah, and if you don't have the deli dishes, um, we seem to always have um, enough of these. <laughs> um, they seem to multiply in our pantry. But um, uh, a bag will work as well. A plastic bag um, will hold your pasta, a sealable plastic bag that can go in the freezer. Yeah. Very good. So with that in mind, uh, let's get out our dough. And I want to take a look at everybody's dough and see how ours is doing. Ours was super, super dry when I checked on it. So I added a little, teeny little extra oil and a teeny little extra water. And now my dough is right, really kind of like to where I like to see it. Um, uh, so and if, if yours isn't exactly perfect, no worries. Um, just like with the sourdough bread, you can always modify and adapt by adding a little bit more oil or adding a little bit more flour at this stage of the game. So I'm curious to check out if anybody, everybody wants to show me your, your dough. It should be more moist and more, oh, beautiful. Looks like you have beautiful dough. Oh, wow. Lovely. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Beautiful, Excellent. beautiful. Nice. nice. And so you can decide if you want to make it all now or if you're gonna make just a teeny little bit, um, um, I guess we're gonna, we're, and you're gonna decide, do you wanna do shells? Do you wanna do bow tie pasta? Or do you wanna do noodles? In the end, we're gonna be doing noodles. Um, they're in some ways the funnest. Shells are the most work. And they're also the most difficult. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have by no means mastered the whole shell thing. Um, they are the most difficult, require the most patience. So George is going to show you shells. Um, <laughs> then I'm going to roll the the, the other two um, bow tie pasta and noodles require we roll out a sheet of dough. And I'm going to do that and show you bow tie pasta. I'm going to do a couple examples of bow tie pasta, and then I'm going to go on to make the noodles. And so we're going to be serving up and making noodles here. Um, so, but you can decide what you want to do. And I guess we're up to making noodles. And so that's yeah. George's cue. Yeah, we're going to start with the, um, with the shells. And um, if you've uh, gone online or to look at the pasta grannies, or you've um, taken an Italian pasta cooking class or preparation class, or watched videos online, any of those things, read a book, anything, um, there are hundreds of varieties of different kinds of pasta. It seems like anything can become a pasta making tool. Um, if you go probably to some of the cooking places in town that specialize in Italian cooking, perhaps 
um, you will find a bunch of different kinds of tools for making pasta. Um, some of the things that seem to work um, are, we have like a package of skewers here, you know, for shish kebab. That can be a pasta making tool if you use that to roll out some pasta into a tube. Um, you can make like penne pasta, you know, things that are, you know, hollow inside. Um, that can become a tool for making pasta. Um, and pretty much anything that you can think of, including your fingers, can be pasta making tools. For shells, um, I use a butter knife. And so this seems to work best. Um, if you watch the pasta grannies, um, some of them use a butter knife like this, some of them use their thumb. And so I'll show you both. The, this seems to work best. And if you do watch the pasta grannies, you will think that this is the easiest thing in the world because those women are able to pop these things out like they're on an assembly line. It's amazing how fast they are at doing this. I am not that way. And so part of this is a little bit like um, uh, doing a, a show with children or animals. Um, some of it is a little bit, um, you know, iffy as far as how it's going to turn out. Anyhow, um, onto our um, rolling surface, I'm putting just a little bit of flour. Um, that allows the pasta to move around and not get stuck. Um, I also want to put some on my hands as well. Um, for making shells, I pull off just a little bit of pasta, just a teeny bit into my hands, and I start to roll it. Um, what I want to do is I want to form a long tube, kind of um, like probably the diameter of a number two pencil is what we're going for. And so I just roll this between my hands. And as I do, I notice that the dough gets softer. Um, the texture seems to change. That's exactly what we want. Um, it's almost like um, starting a fire with um, two sticks or something rubbing it between your hands like this. But anyhow, um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a nice long tube of pasta for making our shells. And so I'm starting at one end and then I turn it around and then I work the other end. And so I'm trying to get that number two pencil kind of uh, uh, look to it. Um, if it's not completely even, it's not important. Um, you just want to kind of get it down to that size um, so that it's going to make a really nice shell. And the flour really helps if you have just a teeny bit of flour on your, on your hands while you're doing this. So what we have is we have a nice long tube here on my um, on my cutting board, and that is going to be the start of our shells. So here we have it. Kind of looks like a pasta snake. <laughs> um, that's what we're working with. And um, as uh, you know, as Mike started out, this is probably the hardest of the three types of pasta we're going to do. Um, again, I'm not fast like the pasta grannies who can pop these things out, you know, by the dozens very quickly. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut um, tiny pieces off of this tube. And so really what I have is I don't know if you can see it, but it's a really tiny piece of pasta. Um, a tiny piece of rolled tube is basically what I'm looking at. Then with my butter knife, I'm going to take it like this in my hand. I um, have my index finger over the top of it. And I'm just going to press against this and roll towards me so that it makes this kind of half circular shape here that forms like a, a nice, it's kind of hard, they're really small, but it's going to make a nice shell shape to it. And that's what you're going to do over and over and over. 
Nice. Very nice. Sarah, looks Beautiful. good. Beautiful. Um, that's our shape that we're going for there, our pasta shell. Now, what you can do in addition to um, just using the butter knife is if you want to get fancy and you want that ribbed kind of backing to the shell, you know, the store-bought pasta that you see that shells usually has this kind of rib ribbing in it. Um, then you can take your little piece of pasta, your little shell, and um, I use a little cheese grater here that has some kind of a rough surface to it. And if you drag that along with your finger, and you're gonna have to watch out because you don't wanna get your finger along that, but if you roll that on there, it is really hard to see this because it's really small, but by rubbing it along the rough surface, it adds a texture to, to the shell. And it's it, beautiful. It's, ba it's beautiful. <laughs> it's basically just repeating this over and over and over, you know, with my butter knife rolling out, you know, each of these little shells um, one at a time. And again, the more you do this, the faster it goes. You know, it's kind of nice to put on some nice music um, as you're doing this, but you're rubbing all of these along with your butter knife, trying to get that shell shape, that, that bowl that's going to hold sauce when you cook it. When you cook this pasta like any other pasta, like the store-bought pasta, it's going to expand. So whatever size it is, it's going to get bigger than that. And so if you're going for those nice petite little teeny, you know, shell pasta that you see in the store, you're going to want to make them as small as you possibly can. But if they're bigger, it doesn't really matter. It still tastes delicious. It still tastes good. Um, and this is really an art more than anything, I think. Um, you know, the more you do it, the more practice you get, the better it gets. Now, for doing this with your finger, you can use your index finger or you can use your thumb. Either one works. It's kind of your thumb or your finger becomes the butter knife in this case. And so you press with your finger and you roll towards yourself and it creates a nice um, little um, shell shape. Kind of hard to see, <laughs> but it creates a nice little shell shape if you can kind of see that there. One question. Yeah. If we're not doing shells, should we still be kneading our dough? Yeah, yes. you may as well. If you're not doing shells, um, <laughs> if you want to try a couple of shells, that's okay, because then you can just mm -hmm. yeah, put the shells back into the pasta and knead it into there. Um, shells, again, are the hardest. They're the most time-consuming. Um, pasta, it all kind of tastes the same anyway. <laughs> I'll um, just say this. Some of the best meals we've ever had, though, have been the result of us deciding we're going to do a shell pasta. And we'll just take two cutting forks to the dining room table, and the two of us will make pasta shells for a half hour. And we just have a lovely time as the sauce is cooking, and you end up with these lovely, lovely shells. Um, and the important thing, I think, is that, you know, in our culture, we're used to the store-bought perfect shaped shells that are all exactly uniform. Um, and we consider that ideal. Um, in Italy, that is not the case. Um, having unique shapes, um, unique little shells really considered the hallmark of a handmade pasta. Um, we're going to notice that very much when we make the noodles. Uh, but um, as you can see, well, probably just detail, but make sure these beautiful shells he's making are their own unique piece of art in their own way. <laughs> and um, and we're, we, art. <laughs> we use um, the cheese grater when we want to texture the outside, but they actually make devices. They even have cutting boards that you can buy that have different textures built into them for texturing your pastas differently. People use all kinds of other home implements that have any sort of texture that's smooth enough to roll your pasta onto. So you can just be creative and texture and shape those things however you want. But for right now, we should still be kneading our dough if we're not cutting it into sure, shells. Sure, do that. That's, yes, yeah, you're exactly that's great. 
Right. Perfect. And uh, I just did a handful of these. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a little bit of flour, um, put it into my bowl uh, where my pasta is going to sit and dry a little bit. And then I'm just going to toss those in there. And uh, the flour will help keep them separated. It'll help to dry them out a bit um, so that they will be ready to go into the water when the water is ready. Anyhow, that's the, the shell making. Um, and uh, again, I, I think that the numbers of pasta varieties are, seem infinite. Um, if you travel to Italy, um, Italy is very regional in terms of its cuisine. And so one cuisine in Tuscany is very different from Venezia. So it's very different in different parts of the country. And so the sauces are different, the pastas are different. Um, just a word, um, we have tried ravioli, tortellini, you know, the ones that are filled pasta, those work really well, but you have to typically with those make two flat sheets of identical pasta, lay one of the sheets out, um, put your filling in clumps you know, in the different squares that you're going to cut, um, your tortellini or ravioli, lay the top layer on top of that, press it into that, and so you have each of your filled tortellini or ravioli there, and then um, that provides the basis for filled pasta. With ravioli, you have the flat squares. With the tortellinis, you have the, um, it's basically, you take that and you bend it towards itself in a ring, and, it, and the tortellini becomes that ring. Yep, very good. So, um, so moving on to, um, um, there's two, you know, there's hundreds or thousands of different kinds of pastas. Um, they, generally speaking, they can fit into two categories. The shells, which require you to make those long tubes that you slice into peas that you then shape into the, into the uh, shells. Um, the other is shapes that require that you roll it into sheets uh, first. The first step, you know, whether you're making ravioli, lasagna, new, uh, um, long noodles, all of that requires that you first roll it out into long, thin sheets. So the very first thing we're going to do um, to make either bow tie pasta or noodles is to take um, our dough and roll it into a big, flat sheet. Um, and this whole bunch of dough is too much for me to fit on this cutting board. Um, so the very first thing I'm going to do is cut that. I'm going to cut about a third of this off, actually. Um, two thirds of this I'm going to store away because um, I don't need to make all that much pasta. Depending upon how much pasta, you may want to put some of yours aside and freeze it. You may want to do two sheets of, uh, of noodles. Um, I probably may do two sheets of noodles. And then you're just going to take um, the one that you're going to roll out and you just kind of soften it and with your hands, move it around, kind of generally slowly flatten it out. You're going to want to have a nice lightly floured cutting board um, to work on. Um, and I'll be really candid with you. This requires some um, muscle work because we're going to want to get these sheets of pasta as thin as we can. I normally do not do this on this cutting board because it's going to slide around. Um, but our countertop, you can see, is about the same color as the pasta, and it gets really hard for you to see. So I'm using the cutter cutting board, um, which is going to be extra hard for me because it's going to slide around. Um, but you can use any surface, um, any really hard, solid surface that you can flour. You're just going to generally gently take your hands, make this into um, you know, kind of a, a semi-flat surface. And you're going to just set it down, start pressing it in, moving it around. Um, our ultimate goal is to get this as flat and thin and even as we possibly can. Um, and we said we're going to use a, roll, a typical wooden rolling pin is the ideal thing for doing that. I told you it was going to slide around and it is. Um, I, have a, I have a question. My dough feels horrible. 
What do you What do you mean by horrible? It's like falling apart. Okay. Um, take Take a hold of your dough. Have you been kneading it? Yeah, I'm trying. Okay. Well, you may need to, if your dough is having problems, if you think it's too wet, you can add some more flour. If you think it's too dry, add some, a little bit of water to it, sprinkle it in and knead it. Just take your dough, knead the heck out of it. Okay, cause like little bits keep falling off. Should I add water then? Yep, you can sprinkle water, you can sprinkle water on your surface. Um, it, uh, and then, by the way, thank you for bringing that up. That's a good thing. Our dough doesn't have to be perfect right now. This is kind of how, when he cut it in half, uh, how it looks throughout. It's pretty solid throughout the whole entire. Uh, it's soft, but dough. it's soft, but and very pliable, but not sticky is what we want. Um, and if it's not perfect, again. Um, if you want to add flour, add more flour, knead it, play with it. As we roll it out, the consistency and texture is going to change a lot. We're going to be working this dough as we roll it. But if you need to add anything to it now, either a little bit of flour or a little bit of water to get it to stick together better, that's perfectly fine and great. Um, we're going to keep working the dough because we're going to try to make this a really, all, we want, we're going to want to roll this so thin that we can see our fingers through it. So we can stick our fingers underneath it and see through it. Um, and so work your dough, work your dough. If you have to add water or flour, go for it. And then you're just going to slowly start rolling this out. This is where the upper body strength comes in. And then you're going to just, what I like to do is ultimately to try to get it square, because if we're doing things like bow tie pasta, cutting squares is just so much easier if it's reasonably square. Um, I like to flip it around, roll it the other direction, and then I'll sp slowly start folding in the edges. And again, if at this point, if you need to add a little water, you can sprinkle some water in and then just keep rolling. Um, as you fold the edges in with each rolling, um, it'll slowly begin to take more and more of a square shape to it. I've also used a knife to cut it more into a square as well. That yeah. helps as well. And it doesn't have to be perfectly square. As you'll no. see, I've even used, I've made noodles that are, you know, from round balls of dough. Um, and it's just absolutely fine. Because again, we're not necessarily trying to go for perfectly even. We don't want machine cut looking noodles here because, you know, the sign of a good handmade, hand rolled pasta is that there's variation with every noodle. Every single noodle is its own unique character. And then we're just going to keep rolling it out. I'm pressing, I'm flipping, and a lot. you just have to keep flipping, rolling. And then this ends a little weird, so I'm going to flip that over. And again, you can sprinkle water on your dough. You can sprinkle flour on your dough. Um, this working process is we're getting all the bubbles and air out of it that may have happened while it was sitting because of the sourdough that we put in it. Can we also sprinkle oil? You can, yes, absolutely. Um, the oil will add flavor, it will add softness, it will add, um, you know, fat is just flavor and it also makes it less sticky. Yeah, ideally when you're rolling, like you can see with Mike, you don't want it to stick at all to either the, sur the cutting board surface or the rolling pin. And, uh, whether you're using a regular rolling pin or you're using a water bottle or anything like that, you just want to make sure that um, it's not sticking, that it's rolling really nicely. 
And you're going to put all of your weight on the, that rolling pin as you're rolling it out um, and really smash that, those layers, those that you fold, really smash them together. And then you want to make sure you roll in all directions. So you turn it and roll the other direction. And you'll all of a sudden realize, oh my gosh, it's expanding out a whole bunch in that direction. So you just keep turning and rolling and pressing. And adding just a little bit more flour to the surface as you roll it will help it hold that new shape with each round. If your dough is getting thinner and thinner, but it's expanding beyond the borders of the uh, work surface, um, you can take your knife and cut it in half and then work only on half of it and roll that. Um, makes it easier as well. Is everybody's dough getting flat and big? <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> yeah. Very good. Very good. Yes, They're excellent. looking good. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> Very good. It's not, you know, this part that, like I said, it's it can be a workout for sure. You want to really just press it out, get it as thin as you can, keep turning, flipping, and rolling. And again, my, notice how unsquare my square is. Doesn't really matter. No. Nope. Um, you know, if it's too perfect, it will never be. It's handmade. Um, it won't look like handmade pasta. People who really appreciate handmade um, will know and appreciate that every noodle is going to be its own unique thing. And mine is starting to get close. Yeah, two of the things that seem to work best for us as far as eating pasta in our house is number one, we always use organic um, flour. Yeah. And number two is the introduction of sourdough, um, whether or not this is psychological or not. Um, but it seems as though um, the digestibility um, that we have with homemade pasta is just um, vastly greater than store-bought pasta, even if the pasta we buy is organic. It just seems like it works better for us, you know, digestion-wise. So uh, we, we have to digress for just a little bit. One of the things we do at our house several times a week actually is we'll settle in for the evening and have popcorn night and we always buy organic popcorn um but recently because of the situation we're in with the quarantine and the stores not having what we need in bulk and blah 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 we couldn't get organic popcorn and so we got conventionally grown popcorn and let me tell you we would get part through <laughs> our normal bowl of popcorn and we would be feeling bloated and like we couldn't like we did, just didn't want to eat anymore and then yeah. we realized oh my god it's the it's the it's the popcorn <laughs> it's the popcorn yeah and so we switched back immediately we found some organic popcorn and In now we, and we can yeah. devour the whole bowl every time <laughs> and so so hopefully um your your sheets are getting nice and thin Mine is about what it's going to be. It's going to be hard for you to see um, because, um, you know, the lighting being what it is. But I can literally see my hands through this pasta. Um, so you want it to be this nice, easy, thin, even layer is what you're going to want to work with here. Never, can everybody get a sense of that? This is what you're going for here. You need some water? Beautiful, yeah. Nice. I just... Excellent. Beautiful. If you were to take this into like a lasagna, at this point, what seems to work better for us is to cut it to it square to the size that it exactly fits in the pan that we're working in. And so it's just it, it's just a nice way to make um, any kind of flat pasta. So from here, I'm just going to very quickly show you how to do a handful of bow tie pastas. So um, what you're going to do is you're just going to 
cut some square shapes out of this. So I'm going to trim this one end off and make oh. it into some very regular bow tie pasta. So I just sliced my knife. This mm -hmm. slides away really nice and easy. I'm just going to, you know, slice, slice, slice. Again, we're not looking for perfection and even. This is handmade pasta. Everyone should be slightly different. And then to form the bow tie, I just take any of these shapes, press my middle finger, my index finger. Uh, can't see that. I press my index finger into the middle, and I just kind of scrunch it up with, your other with my other two fingers. Thumb and your my thumb and my finger, finger are scrunching that up, so I can then squeeze it together, and I just form this little bow tie. And there's my first bow tie pasta. It's literally just a square with the middle scrunched together. And you're literally just scrunching the middle together and then you're folding it up as evenly as you can. And again, they can all be different sizes. They can all be different shapes. It's the bow tie pasta. It's literally just a square of pasta with the sides scrunched together in the middle. You're folding them with your finger and then scrunching that together and boom, you've got bow ties. You can even make them different sizes. So, because again, uh, the size that it is, it, uh, it's gonna uh, expand just a little bit. And so, but have fun with it. I, it you know, it's, it's a creative process. You know, this is, uh, uh, you know, a, Ideal that you want to present as art. And we're just now going to take these bow tie pasta and stick them over in this bowl, uh, lightly floured, um, spaced apart so that they don't, they're going to try to want to stick together. And we add, a, sprinkle them with a little extra flour so that that doesn't happen. And then I'm going to show you noodles. Um, how to get beautiful, beautiful noodles out of the rest of this sheet of dough. So, now, um, if you want to have long noodles, I'm going to go for slightly shorter noodles. But if we wanted to have longer noodles, I could use this entire sheet as it is. Um, the noodles, I'm going to slice across this direction. So if I wanted long noodles, this thing, I would use this whole sheet of dough. I'm going to take, I'm going to go for shorter noodles. So I'm going to cut this slice of pasta in half. I'm going to move this one to the side, and I'll cut that second. And then this one, I simply flour generously in the very middle so that, so that this won't stick together. Just gently flour, 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 flour. Spread it around on there so it won't stick. And I'm just going to roll this up. Okay. Folding it over. It's so I've got a nice little roll, and I can just take my knife and slice, 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 slice. I'm just going through very evenly, uh, consistently, but very quickly, slicing this tube of pasta that I've made. And, um, and because I floured the inside, none of this is going to stick together. And that's just going to unfurl into a beautiful bouquet of lovely pasta noodles. No pasta machine cleanup, no hat class, no nothing. Boom, look at all those beautiful noodles. And I'm just gonna take these beautiful noodles, sprinkle them off to the side with our other things. And I will repeat that same thing by simply rolling, rolling, closing it up, and then going through with my knife and slicing each of those. And again, you don't have to be perfect. If they're not all the same width, no one's going to care. It's handmade pasta. And the difference between each noodle is the thing that tells your guests you did this all by hand. And it's going to be the most delicious pasta they've ever put in their mouth. And you literally want us to get this to the point where it's transparent? <laughs> I want to be able to see your hands 
generally through it. It's not it's not like a window pane. It's more <laughs> like a shadow. If you hold it up and you put your hand behind it, you can see the shadow of your hand behind it. I think you're good. It, it, at least from what we can see, it's kind of flapping around like it's probably the right. It's close. Uh, the, the right uh, consistency. Close. And you know, as you get, as you do more and more of this, the upper body strength and the technique that you'll develop for rolling with us. Since you guys are still doing, I'm doing. Everything. I'll just do one more sheet while you guys are going. I'll make more. Sheet. The other thing is too that you know, linguine pasta compared to spaghetti pasta, you know, there are, it still is pasta. So even if your dough is slightly thick or if it's thinner, it doesn't really matter because it still is going to cook up into a really nice um, final final result. And um, I, since we went a little longer than expected, maybe you've turned your water off. I certainly did a little bit ago for ours, but I'm getting ready to boil ours, so I'm going to turn our water back up to high. And if we're not cooking now, um, years ago when I did this, I like laid them on a kitchen towel to dry. Yep, yep, you can. You can also hang them. We'll even just leave them in our bowl like this and periodically just come through and toss them a little bit so that they don't stick together. And they won't dry out too much? You don't lose too much of the flavor? No. Uh -uh. Awesome. So some people will fully dry these so that they're completely dried and store them. You can also put these in bags. Wow. Um, we have done them as well. And you know, the the you know, quote unquote perfect dough is <laughs> is really flat and thin once you roll it out. But some of the intentional doughs that they make are thicker. So if at first you're struggling with the upper body strength and getting them really thin, just make them a little thicker. Nobody's going to care. Um, some of the thicker doughs are, and noodles are really delightful. Um, there's a handmade, an, an ancient handmade pasta noodle, really coveted, where they literally just take their hands and roll the noodles by making tubes with their hands, lay it out, dry it, and cook it up that way. Mm -hmm. So it's really, once you have the dough, you can make any shape that you want. Um, and let, unless you want to be a real hardcore um, perfectionist. perfectionist and purist <laughs> about the ancient tradition of Italy, and you're, you know, what you do with your pasta is completely up to you. You can't do it wrong. Mm -hmm. um, we take this dough without rolling it out and flattening it too much. We'll gently flatten it. We'll make calzones out of it. Um, it's uh, it's got more more texture and st structure to it than it. Thank you. So where's your train? And it's absolutely a beautiful a train. Drag it up. Bring it to us. We'll get your train. Here, I'm going to get this one as flat as I can, as fast as I can, see how fast I can. Watch the pasta grannies, I swear. Check them out on YouTube. You'll see these 90 year old pasta grannies making their pasta, and it's, they're just so inspiring. I just love them. I love that channel. I could live in Italy watching the pasta grannies and drinking wine. That's my, <laughs> <laughs> that's my fantasy. Go get your train! <laughs> All right. Entertain you. Check that out. Look how fast that one came. Yeah. And I'm just going to do the same thing. Cut it in half. Are those different? I think it's like whole wheat. I had to use the whole wheat. And now you don't have to do your yoga upper body. Nobody has to do planks today because you rolled up last though. There you go. Instant workout. Small handful. What do you say? Yeah. Oh, lovely, lovely noodles. And then I'll roll up this one.
Project Sunday. Brian, <laughs> speaker. And then this is our giant bowl of lovely pasta. Look all that pasta. How's everybody doing? Oh my gosh, look at those noodles. Mike Fry, you're an amazing pasta chef. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful, Sarah. Nice. Very oh, good. Beautiful. Oh, Marissa, lovely, lovely, lovely. How are you doing, Valerie? The other Mike Fry? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> still... Oh, oh it's it's great. Ready. Beautiful. Is nice. it ready? It's, I think so. I think you need to start cutting that. Roll it, flour the top surface, cut it up. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and put my water as you can't see. The water over here is boiling like crazy right there. And um, I'm just going to pop this in the boiling water. Um, and it's going to go really, really fast. I'm just going to do this now so you can get a sense of it. It's really, um, I, and I want you to watch this because you just pop your fresh pasta in boiling water, by the way, which I have forgot to salt now. I just salted the water. Um, stir that up. You want to give the salt, the water, just a really nice burst of salt. That's going to help the pasta flavor. And then um, the water is going to come back to a boil. And pretty much uh, what's going to happen is very quickly, the, this pasta is going to start floating. Um, and that's going to take about two minutes or less. And then it's done. Um, that's all. I mean, the cooking of the raw, the raw pasta dough goes so much faster than the cooking of uh, dried pasta. Um, and it's a little bit different. If you want to get that al dente sensation, that al, al dente um, texture to the pasta, um, rather than cooking it shorter, the dry pasta, you get it al dente by cooking it shorter. You cook it a little extra long to make sure it's thoroughly cooked through when you're cooking this as raw dough. So we're going to want to cook it, you know, make sure it's nice and cooked all the way through. I've got my little pasta scooper, and I just gently stir it around, make sure the noodles aren't sticking together. And again, we've got this weird mix of shells, noodles, and bow tie pasta in <laughs> but <laughs> And look, the noodles, it's, the water isn't even back to boiling yet, and the noodles are already floating up to the top really nicely. So um, they're almost done cooking now, and the water is really just coming up to a boil. And you can see, oh my gosh, yeah, these are going to be beautiful, beautiful noodles. Oh, I'm in heaven just looking at them. <laughs> what goes really nicely with this is a nice um, Italian salad. Um, I was going to say Cabernet, that. but. <laughs> <laughs> well, that. <laughs> and this nice Italian salad uh, to go with, which is usually what we do. All right, so you can see my water is now boiling. My noodles are now robustly floating to the top of the water. Um, that floating up to the top is really the sign that these things are done. You can see, I'm going to hold this up to the camera. You can see these noodles are really just popping up to the top of the water. That's the sign that they're really done cooking. And I'm just going to dump, dump them in the strainer, let them strain out. You want to get as much of the water out of them as they can. And drip, drip, drip. Yeah. 
And here's our done noodles right there. You can see kind of all the various kinds that we have. We have the bow ties. Yeah, there's a beautiful, some beautiful bow tie passes mixed in. It's a little bit weird. The large and the small. <laughs> <laughs> see if we can find some shells. Um, the, but these noodles, look at the texture. They're just, they've got a lot of life to them. And even though they're not perfect in, in terms of uniformity, they create a beautiful, beautiful shape. And look at that beautiful bow tie pasta. You can imagine that served with scallops, with a cream sauce and chives. Mm -hmm. Oh, lovely, lovely. Yeah, as far as sauces, the, uh, that's where the regional differences also um, show up in Italy. Um, and so you can uh, find a lot of information online uh, to put more variety into your pasta dishes. What we're typically used to here in the United States is the, um, is the uh, tomato-based sauces of Southern Italy, because most of the people who came to this country from Italy were from Southern Italy, but other regions have different sauces. You know, in, in Venice, Venezia, it's uh, much more lighter sauces and seafood um, in, the, um, in their pasta dishes. Um, in uh, Florence, it's wild boar is what they serve. So it's, it's more of a meaty kind of a sauce there. And I'm just topping our homemade tomato sauce with a little bit of grated Parmesan cheese. And we're going to officially sample. <laughs> and see how we did. How's everybody else doing? Are you boiling? Are your noodles noodling yet? Oh, look at this pork. Oh my gosh. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Good. Oh, perfection. Alrighty. The texture. texture. Why is my noodle so short? Did I not? Well, I didn't see how you cut it. You know, the length of it is determined by how long your dough is when you roll it up. Okay. Um, so, but short, you know, short, short, is okay. short is great. We've made noodles that short. Um, if you, you know, look at the pasta grannies, some of the noodle varieties are that short. But it really, yeah, it's about how long mm. you, you roll the sheet out. There is no right or wrong shape. I mean, there really isn't. Um, in this bowl, I've got shells, I've got noodles of all different sizes, and I have some bow tie pastas. And by the way, look at how lovely that bow tie pasta looks covered in sauce. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. I could just live here and eat this all day long. Well, you do. <laughs> 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 so how, how's the, how is everybody doing on their noodles? I got a long one. Yay! All right. <laughs> how's everybody else doing? Martha, how are your noodles? Sarah, you're cooking yours later, but how are they? How are they looking at? Oh, oh cool. very nice. Nice. Excellent. Whoa, excellent. Very nice. Wow. Oh. I'm impressed. There. All of them are, are different, but beautiful. Mm. Oh my goodness. That is amazing oh. in there. Lovely. Well done. <laughs> Loading up nice. Yeah. How about Diane? I never do, great. I said I knew never do this again, and then we tried them, and they're delicious. <laughs> <laughs> um, these noodles can be used in other dishes. Um, uh, I first started making noodles back in college, and that was more than 40 years ago now. And um, I come from a um, Amish, Pennsylvania Dutch uh, heritage, and lots of really, um, you know, hearty, um, thick soups. Um, chicken corn oh, soup, yeah. one oh, chicken pot yes. pie uses really thick, big noodles. And so you can use this in a chicken noodle soup 
or you know uh, those other kinds of dishes where noodles are called for. And um, don't let you know it's sort of like sourdough bread, and don't let your first experience with it um, make be the thing that decides. Because every single time you do this, you learn a new trick trick to make it go easier and faster. All you have to do is get up in the morning. You know that mixing the dough together was fast and easy. And then you'll learn the tricks for rolling out your favorite noodles to make it faster and easier too. I mean, look at how fast I went through that second round of noodles. And look, I've got all these left over, two big meals and all these noodles left over, plus we froze it. I mean, that's a lot of noodles that we made. We have a um, little jelly dish of fro that will become frozen pasta. <laughs> and, it, and really that second sheet that I rolled out, it took me what, maybe two or three minutes? longer than that to buy oil dried store-bought pasta you know you're doing work instead of standing there watching the pot many years ago when my boys were younger and I somehow had more energy uh, <laughs> we used to make nettle pasta okay yeah so we uh, make uh, just a pureed uh, the nettles and what did them in the dough yeah you know wonderful amazing So uh, that's as far as, so how, does anybody have any, any other, any questions about their pasta? How are you doing? How's life going with you, Valerie? Um, it's boiling. Excellent. Very good. I'm, I can't keep my hands off my food, so I'm eating and talking at the same time. <laughs> oh, I, found so I yeah. have a question. <laughs> I know how to be like if I cook from dry, but... So as soon as it comes to a boil again and it's floated, that means it's done? Pretty much, yeah. You want, it, it'll float up, it, it, kind of my experience is it'll, it'll float, float kind of to the surface first, and then a, a little bit later, it'll really rise up more dramatically. You see that final rise where it's all really floated up to the top with none of it sinking down below. Then you know it's all cooked. Mm -hmm. You can also do that trick where you pull one strand out of your boiling water and just test it, you know, just to see if it's done to your preferences. Mm -hmm. And I'll just say the texture and flavor of these noodles is just nothing. You can't buy this in the store. You just can't. You'll digest it really easy if you love organic flour and you use the sourdough. It'll be more nutritious. It'll taste better. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you can do what we do. And, you know, when it comes time to make the noodles, make it a family project at the kitchen table. It's kind of fun to do it together. Yeah. So when you, when you took them out, did you mm -hmm. rinse them off? I did Go not. You Some do, people do. You I can do the, yes, you can do that, just like any other pasta. We don't. And it doesn't seem to have that, uh, I don't know, film on it that uh, commercial pasta seem to have where you want to rinse it. But if that, if that makes it better for you or that's a preference you have, that's okay too. You can rinse it just like other pasta. And by looking at our bowls, you know who the eater is. <laughs> Oh, I see some straining happening. That's a good thing. You know, the fact of the matter is once you throw it in boiling water, it's no more work than store-bought pasta, mm -hmm. which is usually, you know, bad for you, which makes your tummy all bloaty and doesn't taste nearly as good. 
How's everyone doing? I see lots of work going on. Oh, I see forks out. Yay! Woo! Forks! Yay! One up at Ito. <laughs> How is it? Have you tasted it yet? Uh, yeah. Oh, Ooh. yum! Ah, uh, excellent, Valerie. The noodles look great. <laughs> I can eat them just like this. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, you can literally just put some oil or butter and a little garlic, a little cheese sprinkled on, and it's a whole meal. Uh, we've used them cold in uh, pasta salads. They work really well for that as well. Mm -hmm. With uh, warmer weather coming, that's more likely how we eat it. So, Mirtha and family, how are your noodles tasting? Yummy. Really good. Excellent. Excellent. Very good. Pork butter, parmesan, and cheese flavor. Yeah, right, yeah. How's life going with you, Diane? Good. My dough is very tough, so I'm get, try, getting it as thin as possible, but the noodles were delicious. Oh, okay, very good. He also did butter and parmesan. Mm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Very well. That's a great way to actually taste the noodles. This is like a a whole meal yeah. with Here's the noodles the in it but um but i love being able to just taste the noodles by doing the butter and the parmesan yeah. all right very good well any questions there's your first pot homemade pasta noodles well one thing that i really noticed is you think you have your dough really thin uh-huh but the noodles are like they're not thin like i don't think you could go too thin Right, they puff up a lot. Um, yep. And the sourdough, because it's got all that bacteria in it, there's little air bubbles you didn't press out, they'll puff up even more than, uh -huh. than pasta that isn't sourdough. And so really, the thinner you roll it, the, th the thinner your noodles will be. But I, I like the thicker noodles. The mm -hmm. sourdough noodles will always be thicker. They'll always have a more hearty texture mm -hmm. and flavor to them. Um, I just love them, mm -hmm. and they're so good for you. First batch is done. Let's see if you like it. Mmm, very good. Yep, and if you have any gaps, are coming from the Amish country of Pennsylvania. Thicker noodles are what they're looking for, because <laughs> that is the basis of cooking. And really, watch the pasta grannies. You'll see. So, I mean, sometimes they deliberately try to make every batch of pasta, like every bit, totally different. So it'll be short noodles, long noodles, fat noodles, skinny noodles, mm -hmm. all in one bowl. There are some dishes where that's the goal. And so um, don't worry about uniformity. You know, make it fun, make it easy. Yeah, some of the noodles that they, the flat noodles that they do are just, you know, a few inches long. Um, and that is a different type of pasta. Hmm. Well, my plate is empty. <laughs> <laughs> I inhaled mine. I have a question. Yeah. Um, you said before that we don't use the bread dough for this, but can we use other dough? You know, like yeah. whole you wheat make or you can make, you, you mean flour, yeah, we, you can use any kind of flour. You can do spelt pasta, you can do, um, typically it's wheat, but you can do a mix. There's all sorts of flours that are mixes of wheat and barley. You can do rye, you can do whole wheat, you can do almost anything. Um, just like with the bread dough, if you're going to use a different kind of flour, if you're gonna do sourdough, you wanna make sure that your starter is made with the kind of flour you're going to be using for your end product. Okay. So. And do we start the other starters the same way that we, you know, let's say if I was going to do rye, would I start 
use the same recipe for the starter? Exactly. Yep. It all works exactly the same way. So um, you can you, you take that same idea, just substitute a different kind of flour, mm -hmm. and you'll be good. And um, yeah, and I've been, we have not ever gotten into um, rye flour bread baking, but um, that's going to be you know, a topic that we take on this year because I think a nice marbled rye would be really fun. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I have seen in the store spinach noodle. Yeah. If you so. take. If you if you go out to uh, we'll plug pasta grannies again. If you go to pasta grannies, they'll show you. There's, I mean, as many different shapes as they are to noodles. There are different noodle recipes, so you can make, you know, spelt or barley or rice or, or spinach. spinach or kale noodles. Um, and, and they all work the same process that we just did today is kind of the same process for me. And there's a little bit of translation in terms of the types of flowers if you watch the, uh, the grannies because what's um, packaged and sold in Italy has different names than it does here. And so there's a little bit of research that you have to do as far as what's the equivalent here to what the flour is that they're using there. They even have um, the amazing like black pastas that are made with like squid ink and stuff yep. squirted into them. So it's just these beautiful, rich black pastas. They oftentimes will make the bow tie pasta. So you have these black bow ties that are just elegant and gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, but you, the sky is the limit. You can just create and do the sky's the limit. You can just go anywhere with this. Mm -hmm. nice. In my pretty bowl of pasta. Excellent. Oh, Sarah. beautiful. Mm. I'm just now eating the noodles, and they're just they're like <laughs> nothing on them, and they're delightful. I mean, Sarah, they're, like, they're good. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I can't see. There you are. There she is. Here. How are oh. your noodles? I'm not eating them yet, but they're gorgeous. Very good. Do you haven't even sampled yet? I have not. Oh, because no. oh, you haven't cooked them yet. I have not cooked them yet, and I have a whole family of men who will be very upset with me if I eat them all before they. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're practicing delay. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, very good. Enjoy your pastas. Any last questions before we go? Um, I do want to put a thank you out to um, those who came, who made your breads, made your, made your pastas. Um, if, if you enjoyed that, feel free to share um, the bread making video, which is on our website at oururbanfarms.com. This video will also be out there soon. Share it with your neighbors and friends, and uh, let's make our neighborhood much more, much more food independent, because that's part of our goals, and we can all do, have a lot more fun doing that together. Absolutely. And with that, bon appetit, enjoy. We'll stick around if anybody has any last minute questions. Bon appetit. Can I ask a question? You bet. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. A question about the cast-offs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, if we were going to make something from that, does it have to be warmed up before we, like, make the pancakes or the crumpet? Do we take it? Can we take it straight from the refrigerator? You the can. Starter? It, it depends on what you're making um, and, you know, how you're processing it. But, like, typically when I'm making crumpets, um, because, you know, when I make the crumpets, I'll add fresh flour to it for a little bit. That's sort of like feeding the starter. Um, and as soon as you do that um, and you mix it up, it's going to start warming up in the making of the dough or the okay. batter. Okay. And, um, okay. and the warming up and the feeding of it, it's going to start making those bubbles that you want in the crumpets right away. So um, it'll, ha it'll happen really fast. It doesn't take much time at all. 
Although it goes slower, the cooler it is. So yeah. if it does come from the refrigerator, um, the culture is going to be asleep. Um, so you won't get the kind of growth and you know that kind of digestion that typically comes if it's at room temperature. And if you, and if you want a fluffier, lighter crumpet, then you just leave it sit a little bit longer. You'll start to see bubbles rising mm -hmm. up in the batter, and then you know it's ready to make your crumpet, and yeah. you're going to get a really bubbly, um, light crumpet. Yeah, it doesn't take long though. It's yeah, it's very short amount of time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, if there's any other questions, um, you can always send us a message on Facebook or through the website. And thanks again for joining us. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. It was. Good job. Delicious. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.